Good evening, uh, lady and uh, gentlemen. Uh, my name's Noel Donaldson, the head coach in Victoria. Um, this is one of the many seminars we've been uh, running. We don't tend to get a lot of people, but we have a competition between our presenters about how many hits they get uh, uh, live when it goes on Rowing Victoria's website. So uh, James is filming it here for us. So uh, hopefully the, uh, the value in it is still uh, spread across the rowing community. Uh, our presenter today is Elaine Bowe, who's one of the senior uh, dietitians at the Victorian Institute of Sport, one of my colleagues. Um, she works specifically with the rowing program. Um, and she's probably got some very good things that she can uh, pass on to you. So uh, without further ado, Elaine, let you do your magic. Yes, thank you. And um, thanks for having me present at this, um, I guess, talk. Um, I do a lot of presentations to athletes and also to um, some schools as well. And it's really good to be able to, um, I guess, reinforce the same messages from when you're starting as a junior athlete all throughout your rowing career, because the messages are pretty much the same. And the earlier that you get um, exposed to these messages, I guess, the, the better your performance and the better you train. So as Noel said, I'm a sports dietitian at the Victorian Institute of Sport, working with rowing and a few other sporting programs. And today's focus um, of this talk is really just around the basics for sports nutrition, um, in specific to rowing. So focusing on fueling, um, recovery, a few um, important micronutrients for uh, rowers and I guess adolescent athletes in general. Um, and then also um, giving you some really practical uh, recommendations in, on the types of foods that you might eat before rowing, after rowing um, and also what it looks like throughout the day and just how much food you might need to eat throughout the day to fuel um, your training and also to help the body develop and grow. Um, and if you have any questions um, you can ask them at the end and hopefully our viewers, um, if they have any questions hopefully they can maybe send it through to Noel and I'll be happy to answer any questions as well via email. Okay, so um, that's basically what we're going to cover today, what I just said before. Um, so I've sort of got an activity or a bit of a quiz and it doesn't work for, um, I guess, the guys who are watching on the video. But um, basically, if you guys get out your phones um, and go to that website, www.menti.com. Um, and then it'll ask you for a code. And so you just need to punch in that number and it should take you to a screen with this question. So let me know when you're all in. So the question's basically, what do you think is the average daily uh, kilojoule intake of a senior female rower? So um, for those of you guys watching, there's three uh, choices, 7,000 to 10,000 kilojoules. 10,000 to 14,000 and 14,000 to 17,000. So have a bit of a crack. So I'm waiting on a few more. I think I'm waiting on one more. Four, five. Okay. All right, have we all answered? Okay, all right. So the correct answer is actually 14 to 17,000 kilojoules. And you're probably wondering what this looks like in terms of food, and I'll show you a little bit later in the presentation. Okay, so that was just to warm up the brain. Okay, so in general, sports nutrition for ad ad adolescent athletes or athletes in general, your energy requirements are going to be a lot higher than your non-athlete counterparts. So that's obviously, obviously because you're doing extra training um, and that means that you need to eat a little bit more to fuel those training sessions and to recover from it. Um, and the main, I guess, message to get across is to really focus on those nutrient-dense foods. So coming from your carbohydrates, all different types of carbohydrates, um, different sources of protein and also fruits and vegetables as well and also some healthy fats. Now this will ensure that you get a variety of nutrients that are important for um, growth and development and also to help you, I guess, adapt to training and um, to establish some regular eating patterns from, for long-term health. So sometimes we might get distracted by messages in the media um, about certain diets being popular. I don't know if you've recently seen that um, Netflix 
uh, I guess, documentary, The Game Changer, um, telling everybody that the benefits of a vegan diet. So we get distracted by a lot of messages and I think um, that we really need to individualize each message for each sport. So just because a vegan uh, diet might work for one athlete, doesn't mean it's gonna work for every single athlete. Um, what happens if energy requirements are not met? Well, I'm sure you feel it when you're rowing. You might feel that you're not um, you know, rowing as, as fast or as strong and you'll really feel the difference. So you'll be tired and fatigued. Um, sometimes you might frequently be getting ill. So I've had, I had an athlete who was always getting sick and it sort of worked out that she actually wasn't consuming enough um, energy. And so you find that you're always getting sick. Uh, one of the reasons could be that um, you're not consuming enough energy to support the body. So um, I just want to run through a few basics. So talking about carbohydrates. Carbohydrate ha has long been known as a source of um, energy food. So providing energy for the muscles during exercise and um, for the brain to focus as well. So it gets, it's stored in the skeletal muscle um, and in the liver and that supplies energy for the body to exercise and to sort of focus throughout the day, making decisions, etc. Um, very important for before you um, train to eat carbohydrate type foods, but also after um, the session to replenish the carbohydrate stores. So I always give the analogy of if you're going on a long road trip to say Geelong from here, you fill up your car with petrol and along the way you might need to top up the um, petrol tank because it starts to run low. And it's kind of like your body as well. So if you've got a really um, you know, long two hour training session, your energy levels might drop throughout and then you sort of need to top up the energy levels there. So it works, your body just works like a car. So talking about carbohydrate type foods. Um, these are the foods containing carbohydrate. So you can see a very big variety there. You've got your breads, your pasta, rice, um, cereals, noodles, um, all different types of fruit. So fresh, frozen and canned. Um, also your legumes, so your chickpeas and your lentils and baked beans and things like that. Also your dairy products, um, milk and yogurt. And then on the right hand side there, we can't forget the things like lollies and soft drinks and ice cream, um, cupcakes and uh, energy gels. So most of the times we want to focus on getting our carbohydrates from um, the first two pictures on the left and middle there because they provide us with a lot of other nutrients as well, such as fiber, various different vitamins and minerals that are important for uh, helping the body use the energy that you consume. On the right hand side with the, um, I guess, more sugary type carbohydrates, we might limit them to only um, in a competition setting when you're in at the regattas. So for example, if you've got 30 minutes before your race, you're not gonna go and eat a sandwich because it might not digest as quickly and then you might get um, some stomach upsets. So using things like lollies or, or a sports drink to get some extra carbohydrate for energy um, is where it, it comes into play here. So moving on to protein, protein is known as um, like a strength food, important for growth and development, um, for building muscle, maintaining muscle, building bones um, and other tissues in the body. Um, and it's uh, essential for after you do like a weight session or after a rowing session, because after those sessions, your muscles are quite damaged, they're sore, they need a bit of um, tender loving care. So we need to feed it some protein um, to sort of stimulate that uh, or kickstart that recovery process. Um, I always talk with my athletes um, about the window of, of opportunity and I encourage them to eat within about 60 minutes after training. And the reason for that is um, in that period of time, that's when the body is most sensitive to taking up nutrients. And so the earlier we can get um, the body recovering, the faster that you know, you, you'll, you'll feel better. And that's especially important if you've finished a, rowing, uh, a training session in the evening and then you've got to back it up in the morning with another on water session. And so with limited um, times to recover, the, the earlier and quicker you want to get on board. Okay. So protein type foods, here are all the foods that contain protein. So your red meat, chicken, fish, eggs, dairy products, things like nut butters, peanut butter, almond butter. Um, for the vegetarians or any vegans, um, that might be watching or in, in the crowd here. Uh, things like quinoa and tofu and soy products are really important sources of protein. So if you're deciding to go vegetarian or vegan and you're taking out meat and you're taking out eggs, 
if you don't replace it with another source of protein, so coming from tofu or soybeans, you're really going to miss out on those important nutrients. And if you're trying to put on muscle, it's just not going to happen. So if you take out something, you need to replace it with an alternative there. Okay. So that was the first section on some of the um, nutrients. We're now going to move on to fueling and recovery guidelines. So now if you get out your phones again, um, the next question I have for you is, now I just want to get an idea of what you guys might eat um, before you train or what do you notice some of your rowers eating before they train? So if you just type your answer and it should pop up on the screen there. It sort of works better when there's more people, but <laughs> we'll work with what we've got. <laughs> So bananas, smoothies with oats, sandwich and a muesli bar, banana sandwich, apple, up and go. Yep. Yep, about 100 grams of wheat, bix, bites, and smoothie. Okay. Awesome. Now, the next question I have, what do you normally eat after training? Porridge and protein shake, yep. Yogurt, protein shake, oats, berries. So I'm seeing a lot of um, porridge type protein shakes, yep. Bread, peanut butter, protein, nut balls, fruit cake, yep. And I'm waiting on one more, <laughs> or not. Okay, all right, so thanks for your answers. Okay, so when we're talking about um, some fueling guidelines, generally speaking, I always get asked how long before a training session should I eat? Now, if you're um, having a really light meal or a, a little snack just to top up your energy levels, now this is gonna vary for each individual athlete, but generally speaking, about 60 minutes. I've seen some rowers be able to eat 30 minutes beforehand, but that's gonna vary with each individual. Now, obviously, if you're um, waking up in the morning to do your rowing session, you're not going to wake up at 3 a.m. to eat and then um, row. So you probably wake up about an hour, 45 minutes beforehand and have a quick, um, I guess, breakfast um, before you row. If it's a meal, so I guess throughout the day, you might want to give it two to three hours. Otherwise, you'll be seeing the food come up. Okay, so in terms of building a fueling snack, so the, the nutrients that it should, um, I guess, contain would be predominantly carbohydrates and a little bit of protein. The reason is the closer you get to a training session, um, the more quicker digesting the food needs to be for, you, for it not to sit in the stomach and cause any upsets. So protein type foods and um, foods that are high in fat or fiber they're very satiating, so it takes the body a lot longer to digest those foods. 
and which means that if you, you know, hop on the water, that's when you start to feel those upset stomachs. So foods that are predominantly high in carbohydrates, like the fruit, um, the smoothies or the oats or porridge, they're really good options. So it was really good to see um, some of that as examples. So these are just some of the, the fueling, I guess, snacks that I've put up and some of the really common um, things that I see with my rollers. So we've got um, some wheat bix and milk with banana and honey, uh, some peanut butter jam toast, uh, an up and go for anybody who doesn't like um, having solid food so early in the morning, um, some porridge. Um, if you're having a snack throughout the day before your afternoon session, it might be a Carmen's muesli bar, um, piece of fruit, um, or maybe some rice cakes with peanut butter and banana. I always get asked, is it just bananas that you, you can eat for before a rowing session? Um, and I say, I say no, because it can be any fruit, because all, all fruits contain carbohydrate, but bananas just seem to be really popular because they're really easy to eat and they're not very messy. So in terms of recovery nutrition guidelines, we're, when we're talking about recovery, we're really talking about the three R's. So uh, refuel, so that's sort of refilling the, the carbohydrate stores which have been used up. Uh, recover, so that's um, protein for muscle recovery, and then rehydrate, so drinking water to rehydrate um, because of all the sweating that's um, occurred from the, the training session. So as I mentioned earlier, try and consume your recovery meal within about 30 to 60 minutes or as soon as possible after your training session um, to maximize that recovery process. And I know that you know, sometimes you guys, when you pack up your, your boats, you get caught up washing it down and then talking to people and sometimes it delays, um, the, delays your, your breakfast. And so my advice is to try and, try and eat and talk at the same time if you're talking to a coach, um, keeping in mind um, that recovery, I guess, um, guideline. If it's not possible to eat a meal within 30 to 60 minutes, and I understand that because sometimes you might have to pack up your boat and then go home, you get stuck in traffic, and then you need to go home and shower and then make your meal. And by the time you get home, it'll be like an hour and a half after the training session. So if it's not possible to have a meal, try and get in a recovery snack first. And I'll talk about on the next slide what it should look like and then give you some examples. So for a recovery snack, especially after rowing sessions, because it takes a lot out of you, it needs to contain both carbohydrate and protein. So carbohydrates for refilling the energy stores and then protein for that muscle recovery. Okay, so what, what does a recovery snack look like? Um, it could be as simple as uh, some Milo and milk, um, a tub of high protein yogurt and a muesli bar, um, an up and go energize. And the difference with this one is it's just got a little bit more protein compared to the regular up and goes um, or a tin of tuna and crackers. So you'll notice that they all contain a mixture of both carbohydrate and protein and not just carbohydrate or not just protein because both of them are uh, important for recovery. So in terms of an actual recovery meal, it needs to contain three components. So again, your carbohydrates and protein, um, but also adding on the vegetables and fruits. So adding a lot of color to the plate because Vegetables and fruits contain fiber, vitamins and minerals, which are important for overall health and helping you not get sick as well. So what does a recovery meal look like? Now, depending on the time of the day, um, if it's breakfast, it could be so your birch and mueslis um, or any form of yogurt, oats or granolas with a bit of fruit. Um, eggs on, scrambled eggs on toast with um, some, some vegetables on the side and maybe a coffee if you're a coffee drinker. Um, and then when we're talking about lunch or dinner type meals, these are just some really um, common ones. So some chicken salad um, wraps um, down the bottom there, some grilled fish, some vegetables or some rice, uh, chicken uh, pasta with some uh, cheese and, and spinach and tomato, um, or a zucchini slice with a side of salad and a few pieces of toast. I've got a fly flying around here. Um, so you can see that one, they're all really colorful and they contain all three components. So the carbohydrates, the protein and the vegetables or the fruit. So what happens if you don't recover properly? Um, you'll, you'll probably notice this, that at the next session you might be feeling sore and tired and you're not able to, I guess, train at your optimum. Um, 
legs and arms feeling a bit fatigued and tired um, and not actually getting any adaptations from training. Uh, other, uh, I've mentioned muscle soreness and even potentially muscle breakdown. So one of the things is that um, if you're not actually uh, getting enough carbohydrates in your diet, the muscle will actually start to break down protein for energy and you don't want that because you want the, the protein to go towards muscle building and not being sacrificed um, to, I guess, give the body energy to, to perform the rowing training. So you really want to reserve the protein for um, muscle building and maintenance and uh, the carbohydrate for energy used there. And the other thing is that you get a compromised immune system. So you'll notice that if you're constantly under eating and doing a lot of training, you'll find that you'll be frequently getting sick. And it's just at all times throughout the year, even if it's um, summer and not, not winter. Okay, so I've got two pictures of two separate meals up on the screen here. The first one is a pesto pasta. Now, do you think that that's an appropriate recovery meal? And if no, what would you add to make it a little bit more balanced? Yep. And what type of protein would we like to add here? Probably chicken. Yep, chicken. Chicken pesto pasta goes really well. Yep. What else might we, what might we add? So remembering the three components that it needs to contain. Yep. Yep, some colour, so some different coloured veggies. And I always encourage my athletes to have at least three different colours. Um, and also because it, it gives you all different vitamins and minerals, um, and also because it looks visually appealing. So when food looks visually appealing, you're more likely to want to eat it. Okay. What about that second um, meal? So we've got an omelette with some vegetables inside. What are we missing? Yep, yep, so we're missing carbs. So what, what could we add to that? Bread. Yep, so a few pieces of toast or even rice if you want to. So just making sure that the meals are balanced containing all three components that um, I mentioned before. Okay, so that's the fueling and recovery um, section. Uh, we're just gonna move on to some important micronutrients that we need to consider, um, not only for rowing, but for all adolescents as well. Now the first one is calcium. Now we know that calcium is really important for building strong bones. And we start to build, um, uh, I guess, bones at the age, uh, when we're in our adolescent years and all the way up until we're 30. Once we reach 30, that's when the bone starts to sort of, um, I guess, slowly decline. So in other words, the, the more um, calcium that we sort of lay down in our early years, the more bone we've got to lose when we uh, eventually get older into our 50s and 60s. And so it's really important for preventing um, stress fractures, something that's really, uh, I guess, common in, in rollers, so the rib stress fractures. Um, and I like to liken it um, to superannuation. The more you put in in your early years when you're working, when you retire, you've got more money to spend. So here are some of the foods that contain calcium. You probably know that um, dairy foods are a rich source of calcium, but for some of the people who might not really like um, dairy type foods, um, things like nuts, so particularly almonds, uh, tin sardines with the bones in there because that's where you get the calcium from. Um, your soy products like tofu, uh, things like your chickpeas and legumes, and also um, vegetables like broccoli. Um, if you're wondering how much broccoli you need to eat to get the same amount of calcium from a glass of milk, it's about five cups of broccoli. So I know which one I'd rather have, the glass of milk. So putting that into perspective, how do you actually include those things into a meal or as a snack? So the yogurts and dairy is pretty easy. You can include into a smoothie or have yogurt as a snack. Um, but things like sardines, ooh, <laughs> things like sardines and chickpeas um, can be easily thrown into a salad. So with any type of vegetable you want, um, having nuts as a snack. And for those of you who don't regularly have tofu, putting it into a stir fry or even a, a curry is a really good way of eating tofu. Um, the second micronutrient I want to touch on is iron. Iron's um, really important for producing red blood cells in the body and therefore um, helping the body carry oxygen around the body. So it actually helps with energy production and if you're iron deficient, you might find yourself being really tired and fatigued 
even though you're getting a good night's sleep. It's just that different type of fatigue and tiredness that you'll experience. Um, and so it's, it's quite important that you know, if you uh, suspect yourself or suspect an athlete being at risk of low iron levels because they're always feeling tired, um, might be a good idea to send them for a blood test and get their iron levels checked. Um, here are all the foods that contain iron, so um, all, your, all your meat, so red meat, chicken, fish, um, if anybody likes offal, so liver is really rich in iron as well because that's where it's stored in the body. Uh, seafood, um, spinach, your chickpeas and legumes, uh, nuts, seeds and also eggs. Um, I do need to mention that the type of iron you get from animal, animal products um, is called heme iron and that's much better absorbed by the body. So it will just be easily absorbed without any, um, I guess, restraint. But when you've got foods like um, your lentils and nuts and, and spinach, it, the, it's a little bit harder because um, I guess the iron is sort of bound up within the, the structure and it needs the aid of um, vitamin C to sort of help its absorption. So for example, if you're having um, say like a, a lentil salad, um, lentils being the source of iron, you might want to include some spinach or capsicum um, which has vitamin C or have some strawberries after um, the, the meal which also has vitamin C to help absorb that iron into the body. So just a few things to consider there. Okay, so at the start I asked you guys how um, what is the average daily intake of a senior female rower and the answer was about 14 to 17,000 kilojoules. Um, this is sort of what it looks like throughout the day and taking some of the examples that I put throughout the presentation and just put it into a, a daily plate for you guys to sort of have a look at what it looks like. So before um, rowing in the morning, a breakfast of wheat bix and banana with honey, now after the row, it could be a birch muesli or it could be eggs on toast, um, plus minus a coffee. Um, about mid-morning, um, some peanut butter rice cake, um, peanut butter rice cakes with banana and then maybe a coffee or a Milo. Um, and then lunchtime, it might be a wrap with a tub of Chobani. Moving on throughout the day, pre-training snack um, before the afternoon session might be a muesli bar and a piece of fruit. Um, and then post-training, if you're not able to get um, in that recovery meal within 30, 60 minutes, it might be an up-and-go um, energized to get in that quick um, protein and carbohydrates. And then follow that up with a meal. So it might be some grilled fish and vegetables and rice. And then if you've got really high energy needs um, because you're trying to put on muscle or you're just a really tall athlete, um, or if you get hungry later in the evening before you go to bed, then you might want to supplement that with a bit of, a, with a bit of Milo and some homemade cupcakes or some, some type of other carbohydrate food. So I guess that period of time is about, um, you'll be eating regularly, so about every three hours. So that's usually, um, I guess, the, the time frame where my rollers tend to eat throughout the day. Okay, so some take home messages, we're reaching the end. Um, the most important thing is to be organized and to really prioritize your nutrition. So you might have the best intentions to, to eat well and you know, I say, oh, I wanna eat, you know, I wanna make sure that I eat right after um, you know, rowing training. But first of all, you need to make sure your pantry um, is stocked with all the foods that you need. So making sure that you communicate with your, with your parents um, telling them what foods you need um, for the week and so they can go grocery shopping and, and purchase those foods because if it's not there, you, you can't eat it. Um, and really prioritising this on the same level as your training because if, you're, if you don't eat well, then your, your training um, will, will sort of suffer there. Um, eat a protein and carbohydrate rich meal within about 60 minutes of finishing. Um, otherwise, have a recovery snack first if that meal is going to be delayed. And the last thing is to focus on establishing a regular eating routine, um, keeping in mind that you know, sometimes those distracting messages can come in about different diets can sort of get in our way, but just to focus on what you're doing and knowing that it works. Um, because when you eat well, it means that you train well. So I thought I'd leave you with a quote and a dietitian pun. Um, you don't turn up to training without your gear, so don't leave the house without your food for the day. Okay, that's it from me. Thank you very much, guys. Um, happy to take any questions.
Any questions? Yes. Yeah, I have a question about supplements. Mm -hmm. um, and what would you recommend for athletes that are wanting full on weight versus athletes that are wanting not full on weight but still recover? Yeah. Any other supplements? Yeah, so I guess that, that topic of supplements is always a really um, highly debated one. You know, what age do we start giving? Should we, athletes be using supplements or not and generally speaking if they're 18 or under I would try and encourage them to get all their nutrients through food because then that establishes really good habits um, and, and gets them eating different foods for different nutrients. Once you start um, in, I guess introducing to them to supplements it can distract them from actually eating real food but in saying that you know there might be some exceptional cases so say you know a 17 year old rower who's needing to put on muscle and reach say 90 kilos and sometimes they just can't eat that massive volume of food that, food that they need to eat. And in that case, um, a protein powder might come in handy there. But then it's really about educating them how to use it, when to use it, and how much. So sometimes it might not be you know, just drinking a protein shake, shake straight down. It might be adding it to yogurts to increase the protein content and teaching them to supplement the food rather than having it alone. Um, the other thing is that Supplements are really costly, so you know sometimes they can cost up to $100. And you know when you've got a really big food budget, and then you've got to add supplements on top, it can get quite um, expensive. A really good cheap alternative is skim milk powder. So that contains both protein and carbohydrates, which is going to help you put on um, that muscle if they need to put on muscle, but at a much cheaper um, price tag. So, and then your second part of the question was for athletes who don't want to put on weight, was it? Lightweight athletes. Yeah. 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 So that's a very good question. And most of the rollers I do work with are heavyweight. We do have one lightweight. Um, but I would really be um, centering that carbohydrate intake around their training sessions. So um, I mentioned before that you know within 60 minutes, that's when your body's most sensitive to taking up nutrients. So um, in that time, even if you eat carbohydrate, that carbohydrate is going to go towards replenishing the carbohydrate um, stores and it's not going to be stored as, as fat until you sort of overconsume carbohydrates and then it sort of has nowhere to go and then it gets put into your reserves. So it's still really important to get protein in because that's important for recovery, but then that carbohydrates will be centered around training. So if throughout the day they're not needing that extra energy, then focusing more on your protein type snacks rather than eating like, you know, lots of bananas or, or sandwiches or something like that. Yeah. Any other questions? I'll just mention something about the uh, economies of scale with those people who spend a lot of money on supplementation. They generally save their money by being, buying the cheaper foods as well. So it's a bit of robbing Peter to pay Paul scenario so uh, and if you're around uh, athletes flatulence can be an, an issue and a, a lot of that is caused by really poor quality nutrition and people scoffing down on supplementation where we need to reverse that over yeah and and the other thing to keep in mind is that um, supplements can be um, at risk of containing prohibited substances and so if an athlete is going to use a, a supplement, then um, at the VIS we have a supplement policy and it always needs to be third party tested by either Informed Sport or HASTA. And with these programs, it basically um, says to, um, I guess, the, the public that if they display these logos, that it has been um, tested for any prohibited substances and the risk of it containing prohibited substances is low. And I emphasise low, but and not like completely risk-free because it's always going to be a risk. Um, so you, any athletes who do use supplements need they, they they need to be batch tested. And if they're not batch tested, then we encourage them to sort of change to a batch tested brand. Any athlete that competes in a recognised rowing Victoria activity is can be subjected to drug testing. Yeah. Yeah. Any any other questions? Yep, good question. So if the athlete is actually needing to put on weight, then going full cream isn't going to be an issue. Um, it can be a preference. Some people like low fat, some people like full cream. 
Um, all milks, they, they have varying, dif varying protein content. So an average milk will contain about eight grams of protein per 250 mils. Um, and then you have things like fizzy cow, which is the um, extra calcium, extra vitamin D. They will contain around about 15. Um, and then the complete dairy, that's um, one that's, I guess, endorsed by the AIS, and that contains about 15 grams per 250 mils as well. So I guess if you get a, a milk that's higher protein, it just means that you need to contain, uh, consume less volume. Yeah. So instead of drinking, say, 600 mils of milk, you only need about 300 mils of milk. Yeah. Yeah. What about water yep. in the months the, um, yep. the day? Yep, so I guess hydration is one thing that's really important because we know that if we're dehydrated, we start to, our performance starts to decline, um, we get cramps, we get stitches and all the things that we don't want to happen. Um, so drinking water throughout the day and, and um, you know, with, with meals to help the body hold on to the water. And you'll notice that if you're just drinking straight water without having eaten anything, you'll be going to the toilet a lot. Um, so drinking it with meals and snacks and you know, always having your bottle on you just to remind you to stay hydrated. And you'll probably know when you're dehydrated, when you know, your head starts to hurt or your lips start to go a little bit dry. Um, that's, that's when your body's already um, really dehydrated and you probably should have started drinking a little bit earlier. Yeah. Welcome. Any other questions before we wrap up? Thank you for coming. And the, uh, the last thing is uh, just a little anecdotal story of yesterday. I was sitting at uh, a cafe down the road. I, I can't be overly public with the, <laughs> not a sponsor of it, whatever, there with the Pathways head coach of Rowing Australia. And they walked past probably just about every elite athlete that we'd watched rowing uh, in the morning, uh, the old uh, cafe culture. And if you put your watch to it, you'd be thinking, I wonder whether they actually met Elaine's nutrition input. <laughs> And how much did they spend it down there? So therefore you're economising a lot of heavyweight rowers there who probably didn't consume sufficient food. So clubs are great places with fridges and those sort of things yeah. there to ensure that that part of it is and that if you go down to uh, South Bank that it's really for socialisation, <laughs> not for part fuel supply, which sometimes it tends to actually be. So, yeah, so really utilise... Product of our own society and we've got to make sure it doesn't inhibit our uh, preparation. Yeah, so really utilise like the club fridges and use it to store your yogurts and your milks and if you don't have a club fridge then getting a cooler bag with some frozen water bottles or some ice blocks can keep your food cool. So they're just some of the practical strategies that you can use if you're travelling um, you know, all the way to Nagambi for a regatta or you're going um, to trials, um, just having those um, things ready to, to transport food. Just a bit of a plug for Banks Rowing Club. Thank you for having us there and those people who watch this uh, online. Seven o'clock on a Thursday night, isn't it, Sam? Five dollars all you can eat. <laughs> Carbohydrates, protein and vegetables. There you go. Thank you very much for coming. All thank right, you. thank you. Yeah.